House of Dynamite, a new Netflix thriller, lit up the internet after one chilling line. America's nuclear defense system works only 50 to 60 percent of the time. The movie triggered a real-world debate. People asking, is America's missile shield really that weak? The buzz got so loud that the Pentagon reportedly had to clarify, it's just entertainment. Our systems are 100 percent reliable. But here's the question, are they really? Iron Dome hits rockets about 90 percent, but that's short-range rocketry. An ICBM is a different physics problem. Intercontinental ballistic missiles that fly faster than 24,000 kilometers per hour, release decoys, and can carry nuclear warheads. Stopping one isn't hard. Stopping hundreds at once is almost impossible. And if you think the nuclear threat ended with the Cold War, think again. Right now, tensions are climbing everywhere. Russia testing new hypersonic missiles. China expanding its nuclear arsenal. Iran enriching uranium again. North Korea firing missiles across Japan's skies. India and Pakistan still staring each other down. Israel and Iran edging closer to confrontation. And the US? It stands alone against two nuclear superpowers, Russia and China. So what happens if even one missile slips through? Washington retaliates guaranteed. And then comes the unthinkable, mutually assured destruction, MAD. The old Cold War doctrine that means if one launches, everyone launches. Within minutes, every major city on Earth burns. So who do you believe? The movie that says the US nuclear defense works only 50 to 60% of the time, or the Pentagon that swears it's 100%? Let's find out. Because when you see what really stands between us and nuclear annihilation, you'll realize we're still living in a house of dynamite. An ICBM, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, is humanity's most terrifying machine. A rocket that can launch from one continent and deliver a nuclear warhead to another in about 30 minutes. It's not just a missile. It's a physics problem that moves at 15,000 miles per hour. An ICBM's journey happens in three acts. In the boost phase, its rocket engines roar for a few minutes, pushing it through the atmosphere. Then comes the mid-course phase, the longest part, when it drifts silently through space, weightless and invisible against the black. Finally, in the terminal phase, the warhead re-enters the atmosphere, streaking toward its target at hypersonic speed. Some ICBMs even drop decoys, inflatable balloons or metal-coated objects that mimic real warheads so enemy sensors can't tell which is which. Now, let's talk about why stopping one is nearly impossible. First, speed. By the time a hostile ICBM is detected, you have only a few minutes, maybe less, to confirm the threat, launch a response, and collide with it. A warhead re-enters the atmosphere at over 7 kilometers per second. Miss the timing by a fraction of a second, and it's over. Second, space isn't your friend. The mid-course intercept, where most missile defenses aim to work, happens in a vacuum. There's no air, no drag, no easy way to tell a real warhead from a fake. Sensors must read faint heat signatures against the cold of space, where even small temperature variations look the same. Third, scale and distance. You're trying to hit an object about the size of a small car, hundreds or even thousands of kilometers away, while both objects move faster than a rifle bullet. The guidance system has to be perfect, not good, perfect. Then come decoys and countermeasures. A real attack might release dozens of fake warheads that float right alongside the real one. In space, they all move together, indistinguishable to radar or infrared sensors. The defense network has to somehow figure out which dot on the screen is real, and it has to be right the first time. Even when the right target is identified, data transfer and fusion become their own battlefield. Satellites, radars, and tracking stations must pass information instantly. A delay of even one second could point an interceptor at a decoy or empty space. And then there's the kill vehicle itself. This is the brain and bullet of the system a small craft with infrared eyes and tiny thrusters that adjust its aim mid-flight. It must steer itself toward a collision at closing speeds of thousands of miles per hour. There's no explosion. The kill comes from pure kinetic energy. Miss by a few meters, and it's total failure. Now consider reliability. Since each interceptor has a limited success rate, the U.S. doctrine is to fire several at once, a salvo. But if all of them share the same data, 
or a single flawed track, every shot misses the same way. And finally, adversary innovation. Modern missiles aren't dumb bullets. They maneuver, they glide, they split into multiple warheads, MIRVs, and they carry decoys that can fool sensors built in the 1990s. That's why even in 2025, real-world missile defense remains more faith than certainty. So, what are the systems trying to solve this impossible problem? The U.S. has the ground-based mid-course defense, GMD, interceptors stationed in Alaska and California. Each one carries an exoatmospheric kill vehicle, or EKV, guided by infrared sensors and tiny thrusters. It's the only system built specifically to protect the U.S. homeland. But its test record is mixed, and it struggles with realistic decoy scenarios. The Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System, armed with SM-3 interceptors, sits aboard U.S. and Allied warships. The SM-3 Block 2A can hit targets in space and near the edge of the atmosphere. Its mobility makes it powerful for regional defense, though it's not yet proven against a full ICBM barrage. That's why, even after decades and billions spent, stopping an ICBM is still the hardest engineering problem on Earth. The 18-minute warning, inside America's nuclear decision loop. If the first battle is fought in physics, the second is fought in time. Because once an enemy ICBM leaves its silo, America has less than 30 minutes to detect, decide, and respond. This is where we shift from machines to minds. The nerve system holding it all together is called Nuclear Command, Control, and Communications, NC3. Think of it as the Internet of Armageddon. Satellites, radars, command bunkers, airborne command posts, encrypted networks, roughly 250 separate systems, all built to give one person the power to end civilization. It starts the moment a launch is detected. High-orbit satellites like SBIRS spot the infrared flare of rocket engines rising from Earth. Ground-based radars lock on, tracking trajectory, velocity, and possible impact zones. Within seconds, the alert races up the chain to the National Military Command Center, and then to the President, the only human on Earth legally authorized to order nuclear retaliation. He's accompanied everywhere by a military aide carrying the football, a black briefcase loaded with war plans and codes. Inside his pocket is the biscuit, the personal authentication card proving his identity when he gives the order. Once verified, a short coded transmission, the emergency action message, races through hardened networks to missile silos, submarines, and bombers. Each crew decodes, confirms, and prepares to fire. And all of this must happen in under 20 minutes. The system isn't built for reflection, it's built for speed. But speed breeds risk. History has already tested this system's limits. In 1983, Soviet officer Stanislav Petrov received a satellite alert showing multiple U.S. missiles inbound. He disobeyed protocol, called it a false alarm, and he was right. One man's intuition may have saved the world. But what if the next operator isn't as cautious, or the false alarm looks more convincing? That's the nightmare baked into NC3 a network so complex that a single corrupted data stream, a cyber intrusion, or a sensor glitch could trigger a chain reaction of decisions too fast to reverse. Each component, from early warning satellites to authentication terminals, has to work flawlessly, under crushing time pressure. And even if every link holds, the next question is harsher. Can the interceptors even do their job? The ground-based mid-course defense system, America's last shield, has a success rate hovering near 50% in scripted tests. Those tests use known targets, limited decoys, perfect weather. Real combat would be chaos. Dozens of warheads, hundreds of decoys, electronic interference, debris, deception. Firing four interceptors doesn't magically create 97% certainty. Not when they all rely on the same sensors, software, and guidance logic. If the data's wrong once, it's wrong for all of them. And that's the uncomfortable truth. Our entire deterrent posture, from early detection to interception, rests on human judgment, fragile data, and aging infrastructure. The NC3 network still includes legacy systems from the Cold War era. Many are being modernized, but modernization can't outpace physics or human fallibility. When you pull back and look at the whole picture, the illusion of safety starts to crumble. The impossible task of hitting a bullet with another bullet in space. Belief that sensors won't fail belief that humans won't panic, belief that our $60 billion shield will work when it's never been tested for real. Remember, no machine, 
No man, no nation, is ever 100% anything. We've engineered the most sophisticated death prevention system in history. Still, we are not standing on solid ground. We are living, all of us, in a house of dynamite. Now tell me in the comments, do you believe America's missile defense would actually work when it counts? If this video made you rethink how fragile our safety really is, share it. Let more people understand the truth behind our so-called shield. Hit subscribe if you want more deep, unfiltered breakdowns. Thanks for watching and for giving your time to something that truly matters. Stay alert, stay curious. Mega Project Uncovered, signing off.